Hey, what's up everybody? Anton here from ecommercelifestyle.com and welcome to another episode of the Ecommerce Lifestyle Podcast. Uh, listen, this is our second ever interview style episode. Our last one, if you haven't heard it yet, it's been getting really good feedback. Super amazing, inspirational, and actually informational episode that I think you would get a ton of value from. So if you haven't listened to the previous interview yet, go to the Ecommerce Lifestyle Podcast. You can either find it in your favorite podcast player or or just go to ecommercelifestyle.com, click on episodes, and look for the episode called How John Maintains Sales After Losing the Ability to Advertise on Google, okay? Something that's not that common, but the way that John dealt with it, the way that John grew from there is amazing, so check that one out. Now, today's episode, I'm speaking to another Dropship Lifestyle member. Uh, today, I'm speaking with Joe, and Joe's story, I'm gonna let him tell it, but it was just like so impressive. You know, this is what happens when hard work meets like an amazing system to follow, meets the type of personality that is just going to make it work. So I think you're gonna get a ton of value from this one. Um, not again, just motivational stuff, which is there, but also some actionable advice that you could put into practice for your own store. A couple things before we kick this off. If you get value from this episode and you think this is amazing, I wanna do this, I wanna be part of this, go to dropshipwebinar.com, D-R-O-P, S-H-I-P webinar.com and there you can get my full free training that'll show you everything that we do here and how to get started with Dropship Lifestyle. Again, that's dropshipwebinar.com and if you get value from this episode, I would really appreciate it if you can leave us a review on iTunes. That is my ask of you. That's how we get the word out about this podcast and about how we do everything here at Ecommerce Lifestyle and Dropship Lifestyle. So speaking of that, I do want to say thank you to Becky who just left a five-star review, so thank you, Becky. She said, great practical insight. Anton's experience and insight into the dropshipping business is invaluable. I learn something every time. I love his compact format that's about 15 to 20 minutes versus the hour-long pod. His precise and focused bite-sized episode is easy to digest, yet packed with information that I can implement in my own business. You are a great teacher. Thank you for sharing. Becky, thank you. I appreciate that. And for everybody else that's been leaving reviews on iTunes, thank you. If you haven't yet, again, please take a minute of your day go to the podcast app on your phone and just let me know what you think about the show. Again, it means a lot, helps us get the word out. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and cut into today's episode of e-commerce lifestyle. Again, this episode is an amazing story from Joe, who is uh, from New Jersey. And yeah, we just uh, had a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about it. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into today's episode of e-commerce lifestyle. What's up, everybody? Anton Crayley here with Joe Soreo. Uh, Joe, really happy to be having a conversation. This is the second interview style uh, episode we've been doing of the e-commerce lifestyle podcast. Good feedback from the first one, so thank you, everybody. And uh, excited to be speaking to Joe today about his story because it's definitely uh, interesting. Has had a huge milestone recently that uh, that he just crossed. But Joe, yeah, thanks for being on. Um, don't really know your story of how you got started with e-commerce. Yeah. So if you want to introduce yourself and say how you. Uh, found your way to this sure so thanks for having me on um yeah i guess my e-commerce journey started i guess when i was a, a lot younger maybe in college just not even realizing it but you know selling old stuff on ebay and i actually at one point was uh trying to fix broken xboxes and and reselling them and you know then got away from that because it was you know just very hands-on and time consuming and didn't always work um but then went through college um Worked as an engineer for about five years and kind of got really bored of it and mm -hmm. stale. I was in a good company, had a you know great salary, benefits, yeah. good culture, but just what I was doing daily was, you know, really boring. Okay. Um, went on a went on a trip to Thailand uh, for about ten days. Met a couple people that were just like traveling, kind of working. Came home, like started googling how to make money online. Yep. Um, I actually came across Johnny FD first and then I uh, got redirected to your course. And I think I turned, that was 2016, turned 26 in May. And then in June I bought the course. And I was like, why not? I think it was 997 at the time. So yep, that was probably. a yeah. while ago. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it took me like three months or four months to get my first store up. Uh, that lasted about three months. Didn't work out too well. The niche was, uh, 
not great. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, first time you do anything, you're not going to be a master at it, right? Yeah, 100%. That, yeah. So I started my second store at the end of 2016. And that went on to do about 100,000 in sales over the next nine months, which wasn't bad, but the ad price was expensive for how much profit I was making. Um, our main product had a lot of defects. Okay. Um, so what we were selling the most of was the cheapest. Margin was decent, but we got a lot of returns. And uh, that kind of killed us. Yeah. Did the uh, supplier, like, was there not a you know replacement for it or something else you could recommend? Um, there was, but at, not at the same price point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was difficult to kind of um, get something of quality into the our customers' hands when we had this lower price option available. Yeah. And also that that niche from the beginning of 2017 to when we kind of stopped running ads for it in September, there had to be, I think, maybe 10 more DSL stores. Okay that popped up in that time. So competition grew immensely at this at, yeah. over that time as well. If, and you're, if that store is done, do you mind just saying what yeah. it is so people get an oh, idea? That was, yeah, that was electric bikes. Electric bikes, okay, yep. yeah. So I, I quit my job at the end of 2016 and was just doing that. Traveled around Thailand for a couple months. Uh, went to the Nomad Summit. Oh, the nice. Second one that Johnny had done. Yep. And I came back home, me and my girlfriend moved out to Pittsburgh from Jersey. Um, she's in her medical residency, so nice. working like crazy, and uh, I wasn't really making any money to, to help. Of downtime, them, right? A lot yeah. of single time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was working on that. Um, didn't work out too well, so I went back uh, working full time again. That was like September 2017, October 2017. Didn't step back. Took a step back from my stores and running any stores, but you know, stayed involved in the Facebook group, kind of kept reading and learning things. And then this store, that same store, I didn't close it down all the way. It was still open. And come April, May, I was getting sales again, just from seasonality. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, damn, if this is getting sales and I haven't even looked <laughs> at it in four or five months, like what can I really do here? So that was the beginning of 2018. I started this current store I'm in. At the same time, I was like, I got to get back into this, really pay attention to everything, details, attention to detail, go through the course again, start it all from scratch. And I launched ads June 28th of last year. And that first month of July, I did about 26,000 in sales. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, and I, it was like the best month I ever had of all of the other two stores. Right. So I'm like, wow, this could really take me somewhere. And you know, I only operated it at like 10%, 10 profit, so it wasn't crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but then in August, just kind of getting more products, scaling ads a little bit as the, the sales were coming in. Mm -hmm. In August, I did 82,000. Wow, congratulations. In the second month, right? So in two months, I second hit month. Yeah. 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 You must have been like blown away. Like what's happening? Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. But you know, when you look back at it, had I not had those first two stores, and kind of gone through everything, learned simple customer service, um, you know, fulfilling orders, getting products up, doing the SEO and stuff right from the get go. I don't know that it would have taken off the same way. Probably not. You know, like it's, it's just, those are such big numbers. And like you yeah. said, you know, the, obviously who you're selling for and the products have a big part right. to play of the success, but all that other stuff is necessary. And the fact yeah. that you've been through the process twice, that's like, yeah, that's practice, you know? So that's, yeah. that's awesome. So, you know, the, the thing that we usually talk about is like the big win, the recent win. So a big milestone. Yeah. So it sounds like you launched what, just over a year ago now, 13 months yeah. ago. With that yeah. Story? So this is 13 months. Yeah. So J June 28th of last year. So it's been, you know, yeah, 13 months. Yep. So where's yeah. that store at now? Right. So on July 11th, we hit 1500 sales. So that was, it's yeah. a huge milestone. First, yeah. So our first sale came on July 2nd of last year. So just, just over a year, we had 1500 sales. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're about 30,000 from 2 million overall. Wow. Yeah. So and, uh, that's the celebration yeah, day. Really close. So yep. that should happen this month if we stay on track. Send, uh -huh. send some emails. Yeah. No. <laughs> make, make, make a promotion and get some emails out and you'll yeah. be there. Yeah. Yep, so, and then, uh, yeah. So June 28th, 
uh, just last month is, was my last day of working full time. So congratulations. About, I love it. Yep. Yeah, about 16 months back in the corporate world was enough for me. So, so, you, you, got, so you got to almost 2 million while working a full time yeah, job. Working was that also in engineering? You went back to your profession? Yeah, I went, went back to the same field. Yeah. So I had originally worked in Philadelphia, then we moved out to Pittsburgh. So I was out here, smaller market, a little same industry, but you know, just a little different right. company. But in your, in your spare time in a year, yeah. you yeah. built a, bill, a business that did $2 million almost. Yeah. You'll be there soon. That's, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And like, I mean, there's so much obviously, because that, that's a gigantic milestone. And something else I want to point out just for everybody listening, like you said, you're at 1500 customers, which that's a lot of customers, right? But that, that's yep. a big milestone. But sometimes when you see people posting like, different Shopify screenshots when they're selling like cheaper products, they're yeah. getting like 1500 customers a day. And you know, like, and just, I'm curious, like from, from your side, you know, cause do you have employees? Like how are you dealing and interacting with? Um, I do it all myself pretty much. I have two people that upload products for me, but everything else is what I'm de able to de dealing with customers, yeah. inbox, live chats, phone, that's you. Mm -hmm. Full time job, two million. So yes. that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I was I was pretty fortunate at my job. You know, I was pretty much sitting at a computer all day. So as emails came in, I was able to answer them. Yeah. As chats came in, which I, we don't get too many chats. People prefer to call or email. Mm -hmm. I was able to take care of those, uh, fulfill orders. You know, early in the morning or after work, and calls became tricky, especially around the holiday season, because just traffic and revenue just exploded. Like, right. November December time yep um, and that got tricky but you kind of learn how to do it uh, walk away from your desk if you have to and yeah you know, make it work. Didn't, I got all my work done at work so my boss didn't really mind too much nice so I'm curious like again so much must have went into to building this and getting to where the store is now but for somebody you know that's just like tuning in listening to this episode if you can give them maybe like one tip something that shifted on, on what you did to go from maybe those previous stores where you had revenue but they weren't home yeah. runs to, to where you are now like what could somebody take away and implement um, really pay attention to what your com competition is doing um, I noticed in this market, not a lot of people are doing email marketing. Not a lot of people are doing even simple abandoned carts, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, response times on emails and chats were slow or non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can just stay on top of service that way, it, it'll go a long, long way. But I think what really helped me is in my other stores, uh, the, the way we ran ads was kind of that three tier campaign where you have the generic, the branded and the SKU yep. uh, kind of funnel. And we were spending a lot of money or I was spending a lot of money on generic terms. Okay. So when we started this, I really put that at almost no bid, like really, really low. So any traffic that I was getting in was coming branded or SKU search term. And that, I think that just helped a lot because it weeds out a lot of that non-buying customer flow. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's like, it looks good, right? When you see all these clicks from AdWords every day, but yeah. if it's not going to buy, then it's a vanity metric. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Especially so you, when you're first starting. Right. And, and have you, I'm curious now like that it's been growing and you have momentum. Have you shifted more budget to generic or are you still going as targeted as possible and focusing there? Um, we definitely focus very targeted, but I have opened up the generic terms and, um, kind of see what sells there and then focus in on those, those products. Like, cause we hit, you know, you kind of through a couple months, especially when we grew so fast, you kind of can see what is selling, what the customers like, what people are searching for. And if it's a good price point, cause we deal with a lot of products that are not map. Okay. So if it's something we can make profit on at a good price point, we'll, and it sells well at the SKU and branded level, we'll open it up a little bigger on the generic level. Yep. And those non map products, just like I'll tell you like what we do with them. You know, if you have stuff that you know is proven to sell and they're your money makers, yep. those are the things like if I was trying to hit 2 million by the end of this month, yeah. I'd be yeah. mailing those out, having promotions yep. on those to my list like crazy. So that's yeah, awesome. We, yeah. Around the holidays, those products were massive for us. Those are the featured ones on your website, right? That's where you're trying to get people to. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. I think people will find that useful. Even like, you know, something just like that I hope people realize that they can take away from this is while you were working full time, not only did you yeah. build such a big thing, but you did it. Like 
you were the person. You didn't have yeah, it. Yeah, did it all, all by myself. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, congratulations <laughs> again. Because so, so many times people will say, you know, let's, let's say they're new to like the community. They'll send an email in and be like, hey, can somebody help me build my website? And we'll say, yeah, we can help you with that. But then they'll yep. say, oh, can you also call supply or stream? We're like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> can you set up my first Google Ads account? And like, it's the, you got to do, you got to do the work. And there, yeah. it, you can make time. You know, there, yep. there are enough hours in the day if you focus on this rather than the nonsense that's not going to get you anywhere. So, yeah. yeah. And I think like just having those first two stores, like it really, and, and I don't think I mentioned, like I actually set up and went through the process of getting suppliers on two other stores that I never launched, never put ads on for or anything like that. Wow. But really setting up four stores in the first two years or a year and a half, you learn how to talk to suppliers, you learn how to write emails and set up a site and, mm -hmm. you know, just going from niche to niche and seeing like, what the different sites do and how to how they're getting customers to kind of buy and, and different product offers and stuff like that, kind of putting it all together um, in the industry I'm in now, it really helped. Yep. So you know, your first store might not be the one that works, but you know, it could just be bad timing for you or not enough knowledge yet. Mm -hmm. um, just, you don't, it's not a failure until you quit, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and like you said too, like if anyone's like running a store, listening to this, and they're not getting great results, it doesn't mean that like you should just shut it down and move on to the next one. Right. One thing right. that you said that I think everybody should take away also is go to all of your competitors' sites. You know, call them, live chat them, like try to order a product from them. Even look at their shipping yeah, options. Yeah. Look at everything because yeah, sometimes you'll find those little tweaks that give you the the, the advantage. Yeah, I'm. I'm bought a couple products that I use myself, like this standing desk yep. that I use here. Like I, I yeah. bought that. I know that it was a DSL site. Yep. I'm just going through the buying process with them and seeing, you know, how they respond to customers or if there's any issues when buying and, and stuff like that. I think even when I bought it, the product was out of stock for a couple of weeks. Yep. Just uh, I didn't know that. Up, and I didn't know that up front. It was like over the holiday time. So then they emailed me like on a Monday morning and I was like, I didn't have any worry about it but so it was fine with me to wait but kind of seeing how they respond to stuff like that too yep yep definitely so awesome really good advice um you know the third part of these these podcasts is where i can hopefully help you if there's anything yep. that you've been struggling with anything you have a question for more than happy to uh provide some feedback yeah i guess for me at this point is what's your advice or the first step to outsourcing the customer service aspect so one thing I noticed, and this might not even fall under customer service, but uh, once I started doing this full time the past couple of weeks is how much time I actually spend processing orders. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much it was because I was, you know, waking up early to go to the gym and then I'd come home, send out a couple of shipping quote emails and then, you know, get it done before work or right when I got to work and then at night. And now I'm like, wow, this takes up like my whole morning. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you tried before to, ha to outsource it? No, I haven't tried just product uploading at this point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, obviously like even if you would have asked something else, I still would have said that's something you should do. Yeah. Now, like starting yeah. now. Right. Uh, hiring it's harder than everybody thinks it is. Like even with, you know, virtual assistants, even if you yeah. hire someone that has five star rating and there's like, it, it's tricky. So I don't know. I'd say a couple things. One of them is you'll probably be going through multiple people. Like, unfortunately, the goal is to hire the best person from day one. But what we found is every way we try to do that, people say things that aren't true. And yeah, people, right. people lie and people underperform and they have to be let go and somebody else has to come on. So I would say just expect that that is going to happen and be very proactive where whoever you do bring on, you are basically like pretending to be a customer or a visitor and you're right. going on from different IP addresses and you're sending emails from different accounts and you're calling from different numbers or having your, you know, your, your wife or girlfriend or mom or dad or brother or sister call and just seeing how those conversations are going, like making sure the phone's being picked up because it's like, it's just necessary. And we do this even with people that have been on our team for years at least a couple times a month, we're, we're still checking in. So um, make sure again, once someone's on board, that's, that's always happening. And that's where your time's yeah. going rather than doing the work. Um, as far as like where we've seen best results from recently for hiring people, it, for, for virtual, I should say, it really is onlinejobs.ph. So that's yeah. the site in the Philippines. We still do get the best candidates from there. Um, one big thing too that I didn't do my first 
I don't know, five years of hiring people that once I started doing made a huge difference is bringing people on that are already better at me than whatever the thing is. So let's just say it is order processing, right? Or it's getting shipping quotes. And that's something you want someone on the team for. What I used to do and what a lot of people try to do is just find somebody that says, I can do you know, general admin tasks and I'm available yep. eight hours a day for $4 an hour. Instead, you should find somebody that says, oh, I've actually done order processing for this company for you know, three years. And then when you say, okay, this is how we do it, they should have something come back to you saying, my advice would be actually, we should try to do it this way, or this is the system I use for tracking, or I actually already have these Google Sheets made with this template that we've been using at this other company I was at. So, so mm -hmm. instead of just trying to bring them on and give them your SOPs, which does work, it's always gonna be better if they come in already ahead of your SOPs. Right, so, right. Yeah, instead of trying to get like these generalists. So yeah. um, I would yeah, definitely recommend that because you know, what happens when you, let's say you hired somebody, you gave them everything that you, you know, follow, you recorded videos of yourself doing everything. They're never going to be as good as you. And there's always going to be like little mistakes where you're like, Oh, why would they do it? You know, like that. So instead you just want to right. avoid that, give them what you have, but they should already be past you. Um, okay. So yeah, I would do that. The other thing is like hiring, like, let's say you, let's say you go on online jobs.ph, you get a bunch of, you make a application, get a bunch of applications because you will, you find people with proven work history with long, uh, you know, periods of work at each place. So not like, you know, I, I uploaded products for a month for, yeah, you know, yeah. Fair. yeah. So people that have been doing this for a while, uh, people that references check out, uh, people that will work exclusively for you. That's another big one we found, you know, even if you don't think you have like eight hours of work a day now, I would try to find that much because you don't want them splitting their time and you kind of want all of their, their effort going towards your business. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then again, like part of the interviewing process, wh what I would recommend is saying, Hey, this is the job. This is how I do it. Make a video showing how you do it. We use a tool called use loom, U S E L O O M.com. It's free. Like record your screen and your camera, like you're doing now and send them a video saying, this is how I do it. What would you recommend that we can do to improve this process before you hire them before they're in your accounts, see what they send back you'll know right away if it's a good idea or a bad idea. And from there, when you hire them, bring them on for a temporary basis. So what we do is 90 days trial period. We know usually within the first month if it's gonna work out or not, but right. just so they don't expect to be coming on and you know, just doing whatever they want for the next year, they know they're in a kind of probation period where you're doing those things. You're, you're calling your company, you're live chatting, you're emailing, and um, like it feels like double work, but that time that you would be, let's say you want them to process orders, that time that you would be processing orders, you should be watching them, like just by having your, you know, your tracking sheets open and yep. making sure it's happening. So for probably a couple months, you're gonna be paying someone while overseeing every single thing they do, but that's how you get a successful hire. We, we've never had it that, we've just hired someone, gave them access to a few SOPs, and then they've been off to the races. So gotcha. that's, yeah, that's what it looks like to get a quality person that, that sticks with the company. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I have the two product loaders I have now. I wasn't really sure about like how to go about getting them. I mean, we had, we put the application obviously on online jobs .ph, yeah. and then, you know, you get 40 or 50 yeah. responses and it's, how do I go through all these? So I kind of narrowed it down to the last five or six and I actually gave each of them like a trial upload of like five or six products each. And then we made a decision from there. Yeah. Um, obviously I don't want to have like 10 people running customer service at the same time yeah so. no no, a little bit, way. A little no bit. way yeah i would bring in one <laughs> and something else yeah. you can do too because like you said you'll get you know 100 applications probably so right. let's just say out of the 100 you see 50 that you're like i i don't know maybe any of these 50 are good if you took that 50 and sent them all the same copy and paste response just something like hey you know we're interested in your application can you respond with the top five reasons we should consider you for this role send yep. that to 50 people, probably 20 of them will even respond. And out of those 20, yep. maybe like 10 will have legitimate reasons. So that's definitely important too. You want to cut that list down as soon as possible. This, yep. I have that same thing. I'll get all these applications and I don't do this anymore because I get stuck where I'm like, I have no idea who's going to be the, the person. So yeah, you kind of have to make these, like, these hurdles where, where you're getting useful responses from them, but they'll kind of cut themselves down by just not responding and giving up. Yep. So yeah, definitely want to incorporate that. Yeah. But seriously, I, I like, I would, that would be my focus. Like when I woke up tomorrow, if I was you, I'd get all the orders processed. Then I'd be yeah. 
you know, putting together an application and having the, the hiring process laid out because that's going to allow you to, to really scale your business. And even beyond that, like, I'm sure you know this, but just in case anybody's listening, like why this is important, you know, let's say a year from now you do decide, you know what, this store has been great, but I, I just want to sell it. I'm not into this anymore, or I have this other opportunity here. When you go to sell the business, one of the first questions any broker or buyer is going to ask you is, what does your team look like? How many hours are involved? Right. And if at that point you were still saying like, well, I wake up and for you know three hours I do this, that's going to just, any buyer that has a lot of money to spend, it's just going to instantly, they'll buy it, but they'll yeah. take a huge multiple and a huge hit on what you could sell it for. So that's just, you know, that reason alone is enough to do it. Yeah. And that's kind of what I've been thinking of. I, I don't know if the goal is to sell this store because I do like the market that I'm in and want to be able to, I think the growth potential is just massive yep. from what I've been able to do kind of on nights and weekends and how many manufacturers we currently have to where we can really get it. So I don't know that selling it is, but yeah, it does take a lot of my time on just the day to day and getting that back to, you know, call more suppliers and do things like that instead of, you know, filling out POs and emailing freight companies. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> if you have, again, if you have, if you said, if you said to me right now, I'm never going to sell this business. I love it. Yeah. I would say, I would say still, you should build it to sell because right. you never know. It's just better to be set up that way anyway. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds like, you know, you're, more than on the right track and it's exciting now that you can go full time into this with you know this history like where it can go next so yeah. um i'm you know i'm super happy for you again and any way i could help i'd love to, to stay in contact and uh, sure. you know, yeah however i can help keep this thing growing but you, you've done an awesome job seriously that's, that's amazing you should be super proud of yeah, it thank you i i wouldn't have been able to do it without the course and that's honest like i had no i didn't know didn't even know high ticket drop shipping was a thing I had heard of drop shipping just from working in engineering construction. Um, yep. It's kind of like a, a pretty normal thing where for suppliers there, um, but online didn't even know it existed until I yep. came across. Yes. Yep. So awesome. <laughs> well, I'm happy to, to share and uh, yeah, help you get started on this journey. So thank you. I guess um, we'll wrap this up, but thanks again for hopping on. Everybody listening, let Joe know in the Facebook group, if you're part of Dropship Lifestyle, if you got value from this, I'm sure you did. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, catch up in person sometime too. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.